this is probably the most affordable AM5 socket motherboard you can find, the MSI Pro A620M. E, yes, the kind of name of this motherboard. It looks like a micro ATX. It's supposedly micro ATX, but it's actually an off-sized micro ATX. So it's smaller with two dim slots and shorter over here. This unit here is not sent to me by MSI. Unfortunately, I purchased this unit myself with my own money. And that's why there's been a gap for videos because I'm out there making money and I'm spending time making content, as in testing it out and such. Just to produce content like this so you guys know what to do so speaking of purchase it retails at about 89 us dollars ish after you convert over in malaysian ringgit it's 389 ish although if you go online marketplace you can probably get it for 349 or if you have coupons and such those like shopee coins to use maybe you can get it far less so it is very affordable and as you can see it comes with just two dim slots which is plenty sufficient for most people. It has no VRM heatsink. I have issue with this, but we'll talk about this later. This is what the rear looks like with the USB ports, which is fine for most people. And then there is a metal reinforced PCIe slot, which is more than enough for most people. As for storage, it has four SATA ports, only one PCIe Gen 4x4 slot, and there's no USB front header for the Type-C connection, which is more than enough for most people. So basically, uh, this is a board that is more than enough for most people, I suppose. So this board is actually very, very basic. You go to the website, you can see everything. I don't even feel like going through the details, but it is actually a reasonable board to use for low-end setups. The only concern, which again, um, when it comes to affordable boards like this, is that it lacks VRM heatsink. Personally, for an A620 motherboard, I like the Astro model a lot more because it is the price a bit higher, but it has a VRM heatsink. But don't let this um, be something that strays you away from purchasing a board like this in case if you ever want to keep the cost really low. Because I thought it's going to be poor, but as I tested out this board, it actually turns out okay. Here's my result using the 7800X3D comparing this board to a full-size ATX board with beefy VRM heatsinks and as you can see the benchmark, there's no difference. Now that is the 7800X3D running with a PNY RTX 4080 Super. So yeah, for gaming rig, definitely this one works fine. But if you can afford a 7800X3D and a 4080 Super, you will not be using this board in the first place. Personally, I do not recommend using stuff, anything with the X model. That includes a 7800X3. I know I use that one to test. Personally, I would, that is just benchmark. But long term usage, I will go with any non X model, which is like 7500F, 7600, 7700, 7900 even, and whatever the APU models like the 86, 85, 87. I have an 8600G here next content coming will be about that one so yeah this board is meant for the affordable gaming setup put in a 7500f run a 4060 4070 rx 7700 uh, 7800 xt those will be fine if you can afford those range actually come to think of it if you can afford an rm 3000 ish with usd what six five hundred seven hundred usd 700 ish Graphics card, again, I don't think you'll be looking at a board of this uh, level. After all, really, it's really very affordable and clearly it's what I would recommend is for APU builds and non-X CPU builds. With that said, is this a good product? I say it's good, a good product. It's just that you have to bear in mind that without the VRM heatsink, it limits your choice of CPU to be used on this and that knowing that you can actually install whatever CPU you want, it's just that the VRM, once it heats up, it's going to hamper the performance. Alright, so we come to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Do remember to subscribe to this channel if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And I'm off to make more money to buy more goods to produce content. Bye-bye.